Hello to everyone. I'm Mark Bauman, the coordinator of music ministries here at St. Paul's. I made a little video about three months ago as we were about to embark on a project of restoration on the organ. And as of just last week, that project was completed. So I thought it'd be nice to make a little video and share some of the things that went on during that process of all the hours that were involved. So think of it as you're taking your car into the shop for a major tune-up. And so the organ was part of that tune-up was done here on site at the church. And some of it was done at the shop of the Dobson Organ Company in Lake City, Iowa. So today I'll just kind of go over review what things happened and all the great things that will go from this point onward. So, and so we will begin with um, a little trip over to the front of the church here. A couple of the things that happened during the project also involved other people of the church, including the trustees, but I noticed several years ago that the big screen here at the front of the church was starting to warp and come apart. So, while the project with the organ was going on, some trustees came and worked up in the chamber and secured it very well. I don't think it's going to move for a million years. Uh, but with the pipes on the front of the organ, we had people from the Dobson Company. They came and they crawled up on a ladder and hoisted these pipes off. And they got dusted off because dust, like um, any other kind of situation, like your computer or your car, is not a friend. It's not a friend for the organ, and so they got dusted off and shaped up, and those are made out of flamed copper. So our next part of the video, we'll be going up to the organ chamber. Welcome to the pipe chamber of the organ at St. Paul's here on the second floor of the church. So if I turned around, I could look directly out at the balcony through the screen. Now, this room, pipe chamber, holds almost 2,500 different pipes ranging in size from a pencil to some that are almost 16 feet tall. So now what happened during the project was almost every one of these 2,500 pipes left this room. So that's where the volunteers were very instrumental helping them out kind of like a fireman's bucket brigade one pipe at a time being handed to the next person and so on and so forth out the door. We use some of the rooms upstairs here and some of those pipes, such as these, the metal pipes were blown out with an air hose to get any dust and particles from the inside and outside. And then they were wiped off by the volunteers. The air hose was run by the people from Dobson and using the appropriate kinds of cleaning materials, the wooden pipes were also wiped off so all the dust was taken care of. We also did vacuuming inside the chamber to get rid of layers of dust from 1977 on. Um, then some of the pipes, and I'm, Wes is going to follow me here with the camera because I have some examples right here. Um, some of the pipes, and it looks funny, there's a wire sticking out here. Well, that's because inside this pipe is uh, several metal components and they're, uh, one of them is called a reed because it vibrates just like a clarinet or a saxophone reed on an instrument. All of those components were taken apart and cleaned. They're made out of brass and by the time they were all finished with that, they were all bright and shiny like they were brand new and some of these even here are from 1913. So that helped rejuvenate them and let's see here. Um, there's a lot of wiring and such in the chamber here. All of that was inspected, checked out, taken care of. Uh, one of the other side projects was there are a couple old speaker cabinets that date from way back when that were hanging on a couple of giant two by fours in the pipe chamber. And the Dobson people helped us get them out of this room. And they went to the superstore and they've already been sold. So. That's a nice little treat there. I'm going to crawl up the ladder here, and Wes is going to follow me. The organ kind of has four different sections to it. So there's a section here, and that's called uh, the positive. It's the bottom keyboard on the organ. 
Up here is the great organ, which is the middle keyboard. The pedal kind of wraps around the part that you play with your feet, wraps around here and goes through this section. And far into the chamber is a, and once you'll probably see a part of the big black box is the swell division, the top keyboard that also has some volume control with it. So all of that was taken care of in here and we couldn't have done it without the help of all of our volunteers because the number of hours which I haven't quite calculated it amount to quite a bit. Now out of those 2,500 pipes about 750 of them were packed up and taken to the Dobson shop because they needed some more intense reworking um, and so they were taken care of at the shop there brought back later and replaced in their places here. And then the final part of what they did with the organ is everything got tuned up. The organ hasn't been tuned since December of 2019. Obviously the pandemic kind of put a, a wrench in that. So everything was tuned up and works much better in tuning because of all the rejuvenation work and the tune-up work that was done. Uh, just like with your car, a better performing instrument that way. Um, but dents were taken out of pipes that got in a dent from sometimes maybe a person working on the organ bumped something. All those things helped to make things uh, play better, work better. What it would be like a, the, um, the result is a lot of things sound better and work together better for the ear of all of us, whether you're a trained musician or not, the sounds just work better and it's very exciting that way. So that's what happened inside this chamber and we're going to go back down to the organ console to finish up here. Another part of the organ project was working on the console and this is the back side with the uh, parts of the uh, coverings taken away. So you can see the computer boards and the backs of keys, etc. But there are lots of wirings and things that go here. All of this stuff was cleaned up, dust was taken care of. There are wires that were taken care of that needed to be redone and cleaned up. It's kind of like thinking about the wires you have on the backside of your computers at home when they get all tangled up at the, in the backside of your desk, etc. So all this got uh, taken care of. All of the keys were checked for their contacts to make sure they're operating correctly, even the pedal notes, etc with all the electrical contacts and the optical contacts and so on and so forth. So that was a great thing and it's a great blessing for those things to happen that way. And that's what happened back here. And we will finish back at the organ console on the front side. The last leg of our journey about the organ project is the console that we all see. And they made sure that all of these controls were working properly. There were a few that had some cracked plastic and needed to be replaced and some different things with wiring. Some things, um, one is like there's a tremulant on a couple of the keyboards and they weren't operating because their things were in, in a matter of disconnect. Um, a tremulant is where we have a note. Nice straight tone because the wind is very steady. Then when I engage the tremulant, it starts to wobble the air just like a person has vibrato on their instrument like a string player moves their hand or a singer starts to do that and it it allows the air to be wobbled and have a little vibrato too so things like that got fixed there were some sounds on the organ especially the low ones that needed some work those were taken care of so they respond correctly in our ears and that was all good um, and an organ company like Dobson is very responsive responsive to your needs after they got done with the project initially um, toward the end of February I went through the entire organ. Checked on everything, made a list of things that I thought still needed to have fine tuning. They came back at the end of March 
and went through the entire list. I will check that again here sometime in the next couple of weeks. There's a couple of tweak things and they will take care of all that kind of stuff because that's the kind of way that their organ companies take care of things. So that is really great. Um, in the future here, as we start to open up the church, I'm gonna have an organ recital. It'll probably be a virtual recital um, because we'll only be able to have so many people in the room, but that will be a way to celebrate what's going on and we will have some discussions about what future plans we'll have to celebrate with the organ and our spaces here for music. As remember, St. Paul's has been designated as a national sacred space. So that gives us a lot of exciting opportunities to do things to expand with music and ministry here in the heart of Cedar Rapids. And I'll leave you today with a little bit of music, huh? We have to have a little bit of music to talk about the organ. And We'll use some music by Mr. J.S. Bach today.